Vivian was a long way from home. The dream of being a nurse and helping people had brought her to this very moment. Wading out to waist height in the perfect blue ocean, the gentle sound of the waves was a contrast to the sound of machine gun fire being shot right at her. Her mind numb from the vile assault each nurse had just been subjected to, but the sun was shining on the crystal clear waters of Indonesia that day, and one by one she watched 21 fellow nurses fall face down into the water beside her as they were shot. However she was taller than your average female, the Japanese bullet that eventually went through Vivian's torso missed all vital organs. She now lay floating in the water, presumed dead, the Japanese soldiers moved on. Still alive in the water, she waited for quiet on the beach. Vivian would prove to be the sole survivor on Raji Beach that would become known as the 1942 Banka Island Massacre. September 1941 was a momentous month in World War II with key events unfolding on multiple fronts. Germany's Operation Barbarossa continued to reshape the Eastern Front, setting the stage for a long conflict. The Blitz bombings continued in the United Kingdom, testing the resilience of its people. Meanwhile, Japanese expansion in Southeast Asia added another layer of complexity to the global war. This brings us to the Allied involvement of Australia. At the age of 25, a warm and caring Australian nurse enlisted for her country, Vivian had grown up in Kapunda, which is a small town in the Barossa Valley in South Australia. She spent days training in Broken Hill, and then her career took off in Victoria. After enlisting, it was not long before she was assigned a position along with fellow nurses sailed for Singapore in September 1941. Vivian later said in an interview, I felt if my friends were willing to go and fight for their country, then they deserved the best care we could give them. Vivian sailed on the AHS Wanganella, traveling to Johor Baharu to join the 213, where she remained until the Japanese began to work their way down the Malayan Peninsula. Then she was moved to the relative safety of Singapore. However, as the war progressed, things were not going well for the Allies. The Japanese offensive on Singapore began on February 8, 1942, with the landing of three Japanese divisions on Singapore Island. Over the course of several days, intense fighting ensued ultimately resulting in the Japanese forces forcing the garrison to surrender on February 15th. This event marked a significant turning point in the war, as it was the first time that British forces had surrendered on such a large scale since the American Revolutionary War. The fall of Singapore had far-reaching consequences, shaking the confidence of the Allies and boosting the morale of Japan. It allowed Japan to secure a strategically important position in the region and gain access to valuable resources. The event also prompted the British and their allies to reassess their military strategies and allocate more resources to the defense of Southeast Asia. As it became likely that Singapore would fall into Japanese hands, the nurses were ordered to leave Singapore. Vivian was in fact the last group of 65 Australian nurses to leave Singapore. Their destination was Australia on the SS Viner Brook. The SS Vinder Brook was only a small ship designed to carry 12, However, in the desperation of escape, they had managed to fit 265 people on the ship. Sticking to the coastline to avoid detection, the ship was eventually bombed by the Japanese. The day was the 14th of February, 1942. A day of love and romance was now a fight for survival. As the nurses tried to help the sick and wounded over the next three days, they would ultimately sink. The Australian War Memorial actually recorded that around 150 survivors made it ashore at Banka Island after swimming for sometimes eight and up to 65 hours. Vivian was one of the survivors along with a group of women, children and men that had made it to Raji Beach. The nurses went to work, looking after the survivors, but the group soon came to realize they were on a Japanese occupied island. They were isolated on a beach with little chance of survival with no food. So a group of men decided they would go for help and surrender. That day, the men left for Muntok. The men arrived back with Japanese soldiers, what happened next was the opposite of what they thought would happen. All the men were rounded up, injured or not, and taken around the side of the beach to another bluff, where they were all they were bayoneted and shot. Next was the nurses' turn. This is where the story takes a nasty turn. According to official documents, the nurses were rounded up and told to march into the sea. In reality, the truth would not come out for many years, but they were all subject to assaults of a S nature. While they were told to walk into the water, a nurse named Irene Drummond called to her sisters, Chin up girls, I am proud oh you I love you all. All of them fell but only one of them would live. 
Nothing is mentioned of the other surviving women and children, but they also did not survive. Vivian was floating in the water amongst the dead nurses and woke to find herself alive. Faking death until the beach was quiet, she dragged herself up the beach, dressed the gunshot wound as best she could, moving silently as she sought shelter in the jungle near a stream. It was here she passed out. Maybe a day or so later, Vivian was woken by a voice of a severely injured British soldier whose name was Private Kinsley. Vivian went into nurse mode and aided Kinsley as best she could, knowing they were not going to last long at the beach they headed inland through the jungle. Armed only with a canteen full of water, they made their way to a nearby village. The men of the village did not want to assist them for fear of the Japanese soldiers. However, the women left Vivian and Kinsley food on more than one occasion. They came to an understanding that ultimately Vivian and Kinsley were going to have to surrender themselves to the Japanese. But Kinsley asked they have a few more days as he wanted to spend his birthday in freedom. After 12 days in the jungle, it was time to turn themselves in. However, they knew it would mean death if they realized they were from the beach massacre, so Vivian used the water canteen, slung over her shoulder to hide the blood-stained bullet hole in her uniform. They headed towards Muntok and were met by a car carrying a Japanese naval officer. From there, they were taken straight to a prisoner of war camp, and Vivian was reunited with 31 nurses that had washed up on other parts of the island. Sadly, Private Kinsley a few days later succumbed to his wounds. Vivian and the nurses would be held in a few different camps around the island. They would endure horrific conditions, little food all the while battling diseases such as malaria, TB, and beriberi. Four nurses passed in Muntok, and during another journey to a camp in Lingao, another four would die. After a grueling three years in prisoner camps, the nurses were finally liberated on the 16th of September, 1945. Upon hearing the news, Matron Annie Sage and Sister Jean Floyd flew to Lahat to be with the survivors, taking along items such as lipsticks and other products. However, the women were shocked to find the nurses in such terrible condition. They were all incredibly thin, sick nurses. The 24 remaining women had endured harsh labor, cruel assaults, and many more unimaginable things that they would not discuss. Fearing a huge public outcry if images of these nurses were shown in Australia, they were all taken back to Singapore to heal. The real fear was that the Australian public would demand the deaths of all those foreigners in their own prisoner of war camps. The surviving nurses were treated well in Singapore before heading home to their loved ones and families in Australia. Vivian was discharged from the army in 1947. It was then she was awarded the Royal Red Cross Medal. Vivian in future years would prove to be the only witness and survivor of the Banka Island Massacre. She would be gagged by her own government about talking about and S assaults that the nurses all endured that day on the beach. Plus the ongoing attacks in the prisoner of war camps. In 1947, Vivian traveled to Tokyo for the war crimes tribunal and stated her recollections of the Raji Beach Massacre and subsequent treatment by the Japanese in the prisoner of war camps. Her testimony shed light on the horrific events and the atrocities committed by the Japanese soldiers during World War II. Vivian's courage and determination to speak out were instrumental in bringing attention to the war crimes that occurred during the conflict. Lieutenant Colonel Vivian Bullwinkle was awarded the Florence Nightingale Medal, the MBE, an Order of Australia, and was appointed the first woman trustee of the Australian War Memorial in Canberra. The Banka Island Massacre remains a harrowing chapter in history, forever etching the names of those brave nurses into our collective memory. Their sacrifice serves as a reminder of the atrocities committed during World War II and the unwavering strength of the human spirit. We must continue to tell their story and ensure that their bravery and resilience are never forgotten. Many lives were lost during those years, on all sides, lest we forget.